Hey y'all, this is Tony again. Welcome you back to another video. And in today's video, we're going to talk about my favorite comics of 2022. So stick around. Welcome back everyone to Comiverse. I'm Tony and I hope you're enjoying the videos on the channel so far. If you are, please give a like and subscribe and ring the bell for future content. I hope you enjoy, uh, I spent the last couple of days uh, rearranging the office and getting it ready. I hope you like the new setup. But uh, today we're gonna talk about the uh, my favorite books that I enjoyed for 2022. Um, I've got a couple honorable mentions. This isn't really a ranking list until you get to like the last five and then that will be a pretty much, those are like the top five books or series that I really enjoy. Okay, so first off, we're gonna mention a couple of books that are one shots that I think deserve to be mentioned. I enjoy the stories. And um, like I said, I think they deserve to be talked about. The first one is Batman Spawn, the uh, crossover that came out at the end of 2022 uh, by Todd McFarlane. And it was an okay story. I actually enjoyed it. It wasn't the greatest story, but I, it was still good. So uh, if you get a chance to pick it up, I'd definitely pick it up. I'm going to get the uh, hardcover that's coming out in a few months that has the original Batman Spawn books from the 90s as well as this new crossover. The second book I'm going to mention is The Death of Superman, 30th Anniversary. It was more of like an anthology story, but some of the stories were pretty good. And I believe they did a good job as far as uh, commemorating the 30th anniversary of the death of Superman. So starting off the list of my favorite stories is Disturbed Dark Messiah. This was a pretty cool five issue limited series ran by Opus that focused on their mascot, the guy. I thought it was a pretty good story. And I'll, I'll be honest, if there was one thing that I didn't really care for is I didn't see the sense in, at first, in, in tying him to somebody from Earth, but then I realized the guy wasn't more or less uh, becoming a person from Earth, but like a sentient being that possesses people from different planets. And it was pretty cool. It was Like I said, it's a pretty cool story of great art. And if you get a chance, pick it up. I really enjoyed it. Next up, we got Punchline the Gotham Game by DC Comics. The story is, I believe, the third issue just come out. I haven't read it yet, but so far I've been enjoying it, and uh, I'm looking forward to reading, continuing that one. Next up, we have Tom Holland's Fright Night. Now, the first issue came out in 2021, and we literally had to wait almost a year for the second issue to drop. I don't know why. But uh, the story is pretty cool. It takes place after the first movie and completely omits the second movie or anything after that. It's got pretty good art and you get to see how the characters from the film have continued on after the first movie. And I, I really enjoyed it. Next up, we got Shannon Mears' Siren's Gate. Now, we're only two issues into this as well. I think this is the only Dynamite comic I actually read. And it's because of Shannon Mirror. Uh, I really like his art. And I picked it up. Now the story I think is eh, kind of a little weak. But the art makes up for it. And I'm hoping that the story will pick up in, future, in the next few issues as well. I don't know if this is an ongoing or a limited series. But I and have enjoyed it. Next up we have Amazing Spider-Man. And to be quite honest. I for a minute didn't think this one was going to make the list. Spider-Man is one of my favorite characters and I always constantly have Amazing Spider-Man in my cool file for better or for worse. The uh, Nick Spencer run was okay. It started getting better with the Beyond storyline and the introduction of Chasm in the last issue. And now the new volume to me honestly started out a little slow. I did enjoy the Tombstone storyline. I, um, But there were it was a hit and miss, and since Dark Web started, I've really enjoyed it, and it's gotten a whole lot better, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how it keeps going. Um, I'm trying to stay hopeful that 
you know, it gets better. And but I mean, it's like I said, don't get me wrong. Since dark web, it has gotten better, but I feel like it could do so much more. Next up, we got from DC. We got Batman and the Joker, the Deadly Duo. And this has been a pretty good uh, book from Mark Silvestri. And like I said, I've only read one issue and I've enjoyed it. I got issue two. I'm looking forward to reading it and seeing what happens next. So next up on the list, we have Animal Castle. The first issue came out in December of 2021. The rest of the series came out in 2022. It follows a loose adaptation of the George Orwell novel Animal Farm where you got basically a community of animals living together. You got this ox, I believe it was an ox named Silvio. Him and the dogs are running the pack, or running the uh, farm, castle, excuse me. And uh, basically it's just the animals are getting tired of being treated poorly and this uh, cat ends up, well, she ends up leading a rebellion whether she meant to or not. And it's a really, really good story. It surprised me. And it was on a lot of people's radars when it first came out. And it, I don't know if the people still are enjoying it or not, but I did. And you should pick it up. So the next entry for my favorites of 2022 actually only has one issue out, and that is Nightclub. This one actually surprised me. Um, Mark Miller did a good job with it. And it's about... Basically, these kids are going to pretty much become vampires and they're going to decide, hey, we're going to be superheroes. For, for the first issue, it was really, really good. I'm what, looking forward to the second issue. And the best part is, is this comic is only $1.99. So you got to support them if you're going to do that. Next up on the list, we have Specs. Uh, two issues have come out so far and it's been really good. These two kids get a hold of these... Uh, glasses that when they put them on and, set and make a wish that the wish comes true the first issue ended on kind of actually both issues ended on uh, ended up on a downer and i probably shouldn't go into any details but i'm really looking forward to seeing how this series plays out and uh, i don't know if it's going to be three or five issues but yeah i mean this was a really good book as well next up on the list i'm going to put these two together and it is daredevil and devil's reign now devil's reign was a pretty solid event, um, especially for me. I don't really collect a lot of events. I am doing Dark Web right now. I did Devil's Reign, and that's pretty much all the events I've done that I can remember in 2022. The, uh, of course, spiraling out of Devil, spiraling out of Devil's Reign. We got the new, the new Zdarsky Daredevil series, and it's been pretty good. Uh, Electra is training Daredevil to help her finally eradicate the hand it's interesting because uh the punisher is now i guess the beast or the uh, favored i don't know what you call it assassin of the hand that's a long story but sadarsky has been real good with the daredevil series even the last volume has been pretty much on a roll and if you're not reading daredevil you should definitely pick it up all right the next five are the what i would consider my top five if i was going to do a list so the next book is Batman. Batman, the Batman series has been really good so far. And even ever since T Tinyan left, um, the Abyss storyline was okay. But it really picked up when Zdarsky started working on the title in with Batman 125. And the introduction of Failsafe, that first story arc was really, really good. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what he has in store for the Dark Knight moving forward. Speaking of Tinian, number four would be The Nice House on the Lake, DC. This has been an interesting series and it started in 2021 and sporadically you get a few issues and then they take a little breather and they release some more. You've got this guy that has pretty much invited certain people to this house for the weekend they're all enjoying themselves, and then the next thing you know, the world ends. And they're all stuck in that house, and they're trying to come to grips with what's going on while unlocking clues about the house and Walter himself. The last issue came out, or the 12th and last issue came out this last week, and I'm looking forward to reading it. I haven't done it yet, and then I'm going to go back and read the whole series. But it has been definitely 
out of all the DC books, that's my number one book that I had been looking forward to. And I hope, even though this story arc ends, I'm hoping they do something else with uh, this series because I really loved it. So for my third pick on my list, I'm going to go with Spawn. And not just one, but all four of them. Spawn, Gunslinger, Scorched, and King Spawn have been really great reads. They've got some great writing, awesome artwork. I really look forward to uh, picking them up every week. I mean, they, they scattered out to where you get one every week, and I'm always looking forward to picking up and reading the latest Spawn issues. They're, they're doing a really good job on them, and I'm looking forward to reading them in the future. So, number two. So number two in this list would be Something is Killing the Children from Boom Studios. Um, I really enjoy the book. I picked it up with issue eight. Um, I really enjoyed the character of Erica Slaughter and um, some really good stories. Tinian's doing a really good job with it. I've since went back and got every issue. And this is another one of those along with the spawn that every month when it comes out, I'm looking forward to getting it. I will give a mention to House of Slaughter. The first five issues were, uh, they were okay, but the set, they, to me, it kind of picked up maybe just a little bit with issues six through ten. The uh, Book of Slaughter just came out last week, which is supposed to be like a precursor or a um, hint of things to come. So I'm, I'm hoping, really hoping that House of Slaughter picks up a little bit better. And uh, so, yeah, it's my second favorite uh, series of two, yeah, 2022. So my number one favorite series of 2022 goes to Berserker. This series was the brainchild of Keanu Reeves, and with the help of Boom Studios, he has they have released a very solid series. Um, just like Nice House on the Lake, it has been coming out sporadically since 2021. The 11th issue came out last week, and issue 12 comes out in March. I'm looking forward to seeing how they wrap this up. Um, the, in the series B, the main character, He's been around for thousands of years. He's bored with immortality. He just wants to die. And you got this shady government organization that's trying to exploit his powers, find out the source of it. And this guy that's running this group is trying to unlock these powers, I guess, for his own goals. And it's been really a really solid, solidly written story. And I've really enjoyed it. And I think y'all should pick it up, either in single issue or trade, whichever one you know, prefer but it's definitely worth reading. There you have it. Those are the top picks or my top picks for 2022. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please uh, like and subscribe on your way out. And I will see you next time.